Taurus friends and welcome to your horoscope for 2021 where Taurus this year Uranus has already been hanging out in your sign since 2019 but this year it's going to square against Saturn there's going to be an eclipse at your sign we're going to end the year with your ruling planet Venus going retrograde Taurus this is a year of change for you and not even the scary kind of change the kind of change that is your revolution evolution and I can't wait to not only as a Taurus be a part of that with you but to see what we create and what we what we bring forth together. So let's let's talk about what is happening here in 2021. Now, first of all, to kick off right away, just getting into the year, I want to give you a little bit of a deep breath because Mars, our planet of action, energy, movement, a little motivation is going to be moving into your sign. So truly, as we kick off the year, Taurus, we get a little oomph, we get a little movement forward. And I got to ask you, Taurus, since we've been experiencing the Mars retrograde and then Mars in Aries in general in the second half of 2020, what, what desires were kicked up for you? Because those are on the table this year. Now, remember, Mars in Aries got something started. You reviewed it. You looked after it. You looked over it. And now as Mars gets into Taurus, you're the sign of depth and stability. You're going to take that, continue it on, and make something magic out of it. So what have you been starting? What's this beautiful desire that's been inside of you in your life in general? It doesn't have to just be a project. If it's you, if it's something in your life, your values, what is it that this Mars in Taurus is going to help you continue on? This is going to be a beautiful way to start our year. Now, this year, Mercury is going to retrograde three times in January, May, and September, and this time all in air signs. When we have this first retrograde in the beginning of the year, January 30th, it's going to be in the energy of Aquarius. So tip top up here in the career house where we are also welcoming Saturn and Jupiter up there at that particular time in the energy of Aquarius. So in the career, as we come into the year, you're going to be reevaluating this career situation. Now, Mercury in Aquarius, also knowing that Uranus is in your sign, gives me this idea that at the beginning of the year, I think you're having a reevaluation, but it is an innovation. This is an innovation to this area of your life, and it's not just career. The 10th house is as much about your public reputation, what we know you as, as it is about your career. So let's say that you are a stay-at-home person. What do we know you as in your community? What's your role we know you as if you're retired what are you doing what do we know you as this is just as much a house of being known for in that reputation as it is in your career but what I can tell you is that during this Mercury retrograde, it sure seems like you're going back over some original independent ideas. What gives you that feeling in your career, in your work, in your independence of truly being you, being independent, being free, and being innovative in this particular area of your chart? I cannot wait to see what this whole year brings to you with that pile of planets up there in the 10th house. Now, the second retrograde is going to be May 29th, and we're going to have that in the energy of Gemini. So just next door in the second house of money. So you're going to be reevaluating the budget. If you've had innovation to yourself and to your career, you're going to definitely be thinking about things of money or of value. As Gemini walks you backwards comfortably with his ruling planet, this is also going to be who are you socializing with? Who are you networking with? What are you communicating out? that allows you to make money or that establishes your self-esteem or your value or maybe even a stream of passive income that comes into your life. Certainly this could be around your possessions, but I think that this has a little bit more with the things of the mind as we are in air this year. So what are you doing? What are you using this beautiful airy energy for to create things in this area of your life? The last retrograde we will see for the year will be September 26th. Now, this is going to happen in our air energy of Libra, of balance, of fellow um, Venetian energy with you. Now, this will light up the sixth house zone. So I'm telling you, Taurus, by the time we get to the end of the year, I think a lot has changed. There's been a lot of adjustment. There's been a lot of innovation. There's been a lot of expansion. I think that honestly will have happened to you, especially for some other reasons I'm going to tell you in just a minute. But this sixth house zone for you is not just the work. 
It's the work. It's the daily routines. It's your health. Freelance projects that you're working on. How you're caring for others and yourself. I think this becomes a very powerful area for you to review during this Mercury retrograde because the question as we're here in September is going to be with everything that's happened, are you balanced? Do you feel balanced? Do you feel like at this point in the year, you're still healthfully connected to relationships in your life that are not only significant, but can travel forward with you? Now, the Mercury retrograde happening in the energy of Libra, as well as the November lunar eclipse that happens in your sign, does give me this indicator, Taurus, this year that truly I think you are potentially letting go of someone who's been a significant relationship in your life for some time. And that's not good or bad. It just means that the path you've been on together is maybe going in different ways at this time. So I do want to prepare you for that. And more than that, I want to prepare you, Taurus, that I think the biggest person you might shed this year is you because you're about to find out that in the depths of all that gorgeous earth, there are gems that you haven't brought to the surface yet. I'm here for it. Okay, let's talk about what this Uranus and Saturn square that's going to be happening this year as well. Uranus being in your sign, Saturn being over in the energy of Aquarius in your 10th house. So you and your career are genuinely squaring off this year. Now, typically when Saturn and Uranus come together, they can bring about a force or a clash or a change. And what it calls for is you to be very, very open-minded to new ideas, new solutions, seeing something in a way that you have never seen it. And when I say never, I'm not talking about our, oh, the moon is revealing something to you, never. I'm talking about you have never seen this, but it is that gem that has been buried down there. And as these two clash together, the least good job thing that you could do is resist it. Please, whatever you do, be with the fear, be, or be with the uncomfortable, but don't push back and resist the square that these two are having and pulling against you. They are trying to take you in this direction that I just don't think you've seen before. I can't say that enough. Taurus, it is it is a big time in your life and it's very special. I'm so happy to be here with you for it. Now, those two are going to square off three different times throughout the year, February, June, and December 24th. So just keep an eye on what's happening in the conversation of those two areas. Stay very open-minded. Stay as flexible as you can as you're experiencing those two energies. Now, you got to keep in mind, too, Saturn is over here in Aquarius. Uranus is in your sign. You are both fixed signs. So the ability to be stubborn and to fight this change is the reason I tell you, please don't, because it's so available to you. Instead, just ground down in here, but allow the ideas to surface and pull you out of your comfort zone, okay? It's really an awesome time where you're going to see maybe even just your career or your reputation become something very, very different. All right, as we continue on this year, we're going to see Jupiter move for a time into the energy of Pisces. So in May, Jupiter is going to move into Pisces, which he traditionally rules. So this is going to super spiritualize, but also bring an energy of expansion, spiritual expansion, the expansion of imagination, the expansion of play, the expansion of healing to your 11th house space. So friends, groupings, um, associations that you're a part of in a social way. This is our social medias as well that live out there. Now, the 11th house is also long-range plans, goals, and designs and ambitions that you have for yourself. So truly, in this particular energy, something that I wonder for you is if this energy isn't, isn't having you want to expand this area. Like we said, you've got these squares that are happening in your 10th house to your first house. And so is this pushing you to expand out socially a little bit more? Are you finding, I need to have a voice right now about this particular thing even in your social groups at home are you finding i need to have a voice here is this changing your interaction with technology in some way this is a huge year for that as well either way jupiter is going to be showing up here and bringing a level i think of also forgiveness to your table this year that I think is absolutely going to be brilliant for you. Now, Jupiter will retrograde and head back into the energy of Aquarius, and he comes into the year in the energy of Aquarius. So truly, in your 10th house, you know, you can set all kinds of things in motion for yourself. But what you have to remember with Jupiter as well, Taurus, is don't make it too big. 
right? Don't make it too, too big. You have to be able to take some bites out of that thing to move things going forward because if not, you take on too much and then it's like you can't move or you're completely overwhelmed, okay? Then we see the eclipses rolling through. We've got a lunar eclipse happening at five degrees of Sagittarius, May 26th. This is going to light up your eighth house space. And we're also going to see another eclipse happening in December in the same eighth house area for you. Now, these eclipses lighting up the eighth house area tell us that we need to make some adjustments to your joint resources or to your intimate connections. This is a vulnerable house for you and it's going to set things in motion for six months. Six months worth of energy, not to mention the ruling energy, the ruling planet of these particular houses, Jupiter, has got his own fresh inventive expansive ideas going on. So truly from this eighth house area, one of the things I keep thinking of is, um, you know, do you need to get, um, this is like a different vision, a different vision around intimacy with things for you, a different intimacy with money, a different intimacy with people. Maybe is this even a different intimacy or a different understanding of how you can jointly align with other resources out in the world that can be as equally beneficial to you. This for sure, for some people, if you need it, if it's something that you're working on, if you had to do paperwork or you're trying to clear out debt or anything like that, this energy will definitely light you up and put your goggles on so you're paying attention to how to do that, okay? When we get to June 10th, we're gonna see a solar eclipse happening in the energy of Gemini. Now, the solar eclipse is traditionally a time where it's still the new moon, so we wanna plant our seeds of intention for what's happening in this particular area. Now, this is in your second house. We've already seen some second house movement happening in the retrograde time. But so as we light this particular timing up for you, one of the things I want to ask you is, what do you value? What do you value and how are you valuing yourself? When we get to this point in the game, how are you valuing yourself? How, you, how are you valuing your beautiful mind Taurus, how are you valuing your beautiful words and the way that you share that and the way that you use that? And has at this point in the year, has there been a change in connection to relationships or your values that has allowed you to realign and allows this solar eclipse to kind of scoop you up in this second house energy and make some really positive changes for you? Or does this eclipse light up and you see I've got to get a different relationship with money. I've got to change my thinking. You know, Taurus, I'm a Taurus with you. This idea that there's not enough. I've got to hold on to something because there's not enough. Maybe we're facing some of those ideas of it's okay for me to let that go or it's okay for me to produce in a way or have passive income or get rid of some things in a way that allows me to breathe and accept my value. I think that's going to be a really hot eclipse for us, okay? As we get to December 19th, we're going to see your ruling planet Venus heading into retrograde until we travel into 2022. Now, Venus retrograde, who are you? Who are you? This is going to be in Capricorn in your ninth house space. Taurus, have you put yourself out there? Where has your expansion happened this year? Your thinking has been challenged this year. In the ninth house, these are new ideas, new faith, new concepts, new connections. Maybe you learn a, a new language and now Venus is taking you back. Oh, maybe Venus is even taking you back, Taurus, to something you were interested in before. And now you get to go back and you get to make space to really study that thing. Because you're going to be asked to look at, review, re-edit, reconnect, reevaluate where your values are. Value is a big word again this year. Values are around ninth house things. This could be too. If it happens to be um, a legal situation that is going on, Venus may actually just be asking you what you're willing to do to continue the fight here. So if we get to this point in the year and you've got something like that going on, definitely do a nice look over your chart and see if Venus is supporting or asking you to actually create diplomacy, create the balance by letting something go, okay? As we end this year, we're going to see Jupiter moving into Pisces for his stay. And we get this sense that in the 11th house for you, these are spiritual friends. These are friends that take you forward. This is a social 
place for you that allows you to move forward towards your long range goals, your aims, your aspirations, your designs and your desires. Certainly in certain countries, by the time we get to the end of the year, who you are socially aligned with, where you found home, where you found that new tribe or where you've expanded your tribe is going to look a little bit different. This is a year of change and innovation. So as Jupiter is here, this is the guardian angel position with Jupiter in Pisces. Know that you are safe, you are loved, you are protected, and it is okay for you to heal. It is okay for you to transition things out that don't belong there anymore. It is okay for you to grow. And more importantly than anything, I think if you get with the tribe that supports you, or if you have this social reputation that you feel like is creating something supportive in the world, this is a position for you where I feel like you literally become the material vision of your own fantasy, which how amazing is that to be able to take something from the ethers and put it in a material plane. I think it's going to be a phenomenal year Taurus. It is going to be loaded with challenge in many different countries. It is going to be loaded with challenge in your life, but they are challenges that you absolutely have the tools to meet. And if you don't, the people, places, and things who you need to learn how to do that next thing are going to fall into your lap and into your life if you are willing to have that adventure. But Taurus this year, be open, be flexible, be willing to find those gems that have been hidden in your earth waiting to come out. Okay. All right. You guys like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the eat and greets all year long. Remember you can follow me on Patreon to see the eat and greets absolutely ad free. And uh, we'll connect in the weeklies. We'll connect in the monthlies and I'll see you on social medias as well. I love you Taurus. Bye.